We hear a great deal about young guys who either had family members involved in the mafia or grew up in an area heavily influenced with its members. For the most part, this takes place for young guys growing up in New York or other parts of the United States. Conversely, Italy and Sicily is on a whole nother level. For the young men there, it's not about following a family member's footsteps or the area in which they live, but more so it's a rite of passage. Culture and tradition dictates a young person's life there, but over and above that, it's expected. According to records, in Palamo alone, there's over 81 mafia families operating. Gianni Nietzsche was born in Turin, Italy on February 16, 1981. His father, a mafia member, was incarcerated with a life sentence for a murder. So from an early age, Nietzsche's godfather, Antonino Rotolo, stepped in as a father figure. Rotolo was a Palamo boss who headed the Sicilian Mafia Commission and was a staunch ally of Totorina and the Colonesi. Although he was Nietzsche's godfather, he viewed him more as a son. As he was heard in a recorded conversation, I'm his godfather, but he's more like a son. From this day on, you have to know when you talk to him, it is as if you talk to me. It's the same. This conversation took place after Rotolo inducted the belly out of his teens Nietzsche. During another conversation that took place in a sheet metal shack, a secret bug picked up Rotolo, mentoring Nietzsche on the use of weapons and methods for killing. The 20-year-old Nietzsche listened intently, like a good student. As Rotolo told him, always shoot two or three shots. There's no need to make too much noise, and don't get too close. Nietzsche replied, one shot to throw him on the ground. And Rotolo added, when he falls to the ground, you shoot him in the head, and that's it. He also warned Nietzsche to be careful about not getting dirty with a victim's blood. Although Rotolo schooled other young members, Nietzsche was special to him. When it came to Nietzsche, he was teaching him how to be a boss. He fully understood the mafia needed young blood. And among that cadre of young blood, he also needed a leader. Nietzsche was fast-tracked and became a young boss, as well as the right hand of Rotolo. Francesco Campanella, a mafia member who would cooperate with law enforcement, explained when he was introduced to Nietzsche by Villa Bate boss Nicola Mandela. Afterwards, Mandela told him, you don't realize who that is. Although he was a young boss, Nietzsche was highly regarded as an important figure in Cosa Nostra. He represented the continuity between the old guard and the young mafia, and was considered a rising star by mafia standards. He was known for his love of beautiful women, luxury cars, weapons, going out on the town with his friends, and making money. As far as money, he possessed a good business mind. In early 2000, Nietzsche was overheard on a bug telling Rotolo that he decided to impose protection money on all containers coming from the port of Naples and bound for Palamo. Keep in mind, Naples is Camorra territory, yet the Camorra was unable to exercise any influence on any criminal activities taking place on Sicilian territory. Nietzsche was also taxing all products coming into Palamo that were destined for the Chinese traders. Containers carrying everything from shoes, nuts and bolts, machine engines, t-shirts, to vacuum pack groceries. In the early 2000s, Rotolo was recorded complaining about the Inzerillo family. These Inzerillos were children, and then they grew up. These are now 30 years old. How can we stay calm? They have to go. They have to stay in America. They must turn to Sorozzo. And if they come to Italy, we will kill them all. During the 1980s, when the Colonesi eradicated the Palermo bosses, the Inzerillos fled Sicily for their lives and most went to America. While in America, Totorina assigned Rosario Naimo to keep an eye on them. But after Totorina's arrest, the Inzerillos began planning their return to Sicily. Advocating for them was Salvatore Lo Piccolo, the boss of San Lorenzo. And back in America, specifically New York, Frankie Cali acted as an ambassador in smoothing things over with visiting members of Sicilian Cosa Nostra. Rotolo was keeping close tabs on the whole situation. He knew that Cali was attempting to oversee the Inzerillo safe passage and was negotiating on their behalf. At the time, Cali was part of the Gambino Sicilian faction and was a rising star himself. Rotolo wasn't happy with the situation at all. He had personally strangled Santo Inzerillo 
and was naturally concerned about retribution. In November 2003, he sent Nietzsche to the United States as his emissary and wanted him to check Cali's temperature. Traveling with Nietzsche was Nicola Mandela, who had been to see Cali previously. After meeting with Cali, they obviously discussed business and even went to dinner with their girls. Nietzsche and Mandela visited the tree at Rockefeller Center, as well as other areas of New York City. On his return to Sicily, Nietzsche, who got along with Cali, explained to Rotolo that he's like us. Nevertheless, Rotolo didn't trust Cali's reassurance of peace. In his mind, since the Inzerillo's return was heavily supported by Le Piccolo, he ordered Nietzsche to seek out and kill Le Piccolo and his son Sandro. In fact, he even had two barrels of acid ready to dissolve their bodies in. To the Le Piccolo's good fortune, Nietzsche never got around to killing them, and Rotolo was arrested on June 20, 2006 for Operation Gata, which was aimed at beheading the Sicilian Mafia Commission. Among the indicted was Nietzsche, but he managed to escape arrest and became a fugitive. More significantly, he was the only Cosa Nostra boss left representing the old Colonesi. Nietzsche and Mandela began moving large quantities of cocaine from Palamo to New York, which coincided with their trip to see Cali. In one shipment alone, they're said to have trafficked 500 kilos. The drugs were coming from Uruguay, Milan, and Naples. Nietzsche came up with the idea of using the old cigarette smuggling routes that the Coyonesi used decades ago. Meanwhile, Le Piccolo learned of the contract on him and his son. So with Rotolo in prison and out of the picture, he set his sights on Nietzsche. He gave the order to kill Nietzsche, who they nicknamed Taramasu, to the boss of Partana Mondello, Francesco Francis. But Francis was also arrested on August 2, 2007. Nietzsche received word that he was being hunted, and he fled to Milan. But to his good fortune, both Le Piccolo and his son were arrested on November 5, 2007, at a country house outside of Palamo, where they were holding a summit. At the time, Le Piccolo was said to have taken over the reign after the arrest of Bernardo Provenzano the year before. Nietzsche remained a fugitive and was put on Italy's most wanted list. He was also sentenced on the Gotha case in absentia. In 2009, he was living with family friends, the Gulo family, at this house in Palamo. The Gulos remained in touch with his mother, conversations that were intercepted by law enforcement. Nietzsche would drive around the city on a motorcycle with his face shielded by a helmet. In fact, on December 4, 2009, law enforcement had an apartment under surveillance. The apartment belonged to someone who died months prior. On that day, they spotted someone that they felt was Nietzsche exiting the apartment building, but he was wearing a helmet and they couldn't ID him. Let me mention the Super Thanks icon found beneath this video for anyone who'd like to show appreciation for videos such as this one, and I thank you all who use it. The following day on December 5th, 2009, law enforcement caught up with Nietzsche, who tried running through the courtyard, but was arrested. Presently, Nietzsche's being held at the L'Aquila prison in the strict 41 biz unit. He's been sentenced to over 20 years, but is on the downside of that sentence and could be released in the next few years. With the arrest of Matteo Messina De Nero and his current health problems, Nietzsche may have the opportunity to step in as the boss of Sicilian Cosa Nostra.